Brock Glover here at Ford Field in Detroit, Michigan, where we're getting ready for the Dunlop Motorcycle Tires track walk. And round five of the Monster Energy AMA Supercross Championship, but round one of the East Coast. And I have Mike Brown, team trainer and past AMA champion yes. of the and team trainer of the Triumph Racing Team. And yeah. can't wait to hear your Triumph Racing stories because this is the debut, the first time really the public has seen that motorcycle. Yeah, it's a historical moment for Triumph and we're excited. We've been working hard the last couple months and they've been going for yeah a year or two on the bike and uh, it's going good. The bike seems good to me. We've not really been debuted anywhere. So it's uh, kind of see where we're at this weekend and uh, hopefully we have a good showing. Well, let's check out this track right now. I mean, this is, the again, the first time the Triumph 250 is going to be out there, and you've got your riders, Jalik Swole, yep. and you've got Evan Ferry making his pro debut. Is that right? Yes, sir, yep. And uh, they've been good. Like uh, like you said, Evan's brand new at this sport, and he's learning a lot. Each day he's getting better and better, and Jalik, the veteran for our team, is... Uh, yeah, he's, he's a good rider. We just got to get him uh, focused, and, and we worked on a lot of things this off season and getting the bike dialed in, so looking for good things with him. Well, great. Well, we're heading off to start right now, and this dirt, if you remember last year, was kind of, it was pretty much brand new. They'd screened yeah. it, and, and, and it's some of the better dirt in the series. Uh, everybody really likes it. They got it really clean, very few rocks in it, and we're heading down this start, and if you notice here, we're on a football field, the stadium. It's definitely a smaller footprint. Short stuff. But right here, this is a short run across the, and we're talking about 170 feet or so before you got to make a sharp left-hand corner here. It's, an, it's a full 90 from the inside. Yeah. The outer gates, it's probably maybe a 110 degree or so, but yeah. it's at that point coming into right into a tabletop setup, this corner right here. So if you've got your line, and we got to watch this section in, in practice there, but the hot ticket was to hit this right here on this table and downside that table if possible. So yep. what were your riders saying about here when you got to, when you talked to them after press day? Yeah, that was good. If you can get down the downside of the tabletop and triple in, but it's like a small mistake, then you're doubling through the section. So got to be precise, get down the backside. I think there's suspension coming here and everybody's kind of always like running a little soft. You got to have stiff suspension because the jumps here a lot more G'd out than what we have at our practice track. So they're noticing that, like bike's a little bit soft. So yeah. getting clean on this here to get the triple, triple single on this is uh, it's gonna be the hotline. Yeah, you were talking about how it being precise here, if you do make a mistake, you lose a lot of time. That's yeah. what's kind of nice about this section. I think it's actually a very well-designed built section. Yeah, yeah. When you land on this tabletop, real simple, clean on, clear that next one and then you've got a big five footer behind it followed by a couple of smalls and then another five yeah. so if they were landing on this clearing this next one you had a triple and then a triple into a colt 180 corner i think but, that's the main safest yeah. line if you can't yeah. get down the back side most people's going to be going off off triple triple then yep and then the a riders if you would and the 250 top 250 guys we saw sexton and some of the other riders out here during press day yes. downsiding this right here so really that yep. would be you know a great run taking off on the small, small. and then derek's walking up the five footer so you can yep. see he's way above us here yep. so they're clearing the tall one landing the over on the other three footer and then launching another three footer to clear the tall and clear landing on a three footer the other triple yeah. leaving themselves at the very end of this just one small single. three footer single into a 180 bowl into the exactly so we got it was you know luxury for us doing the track walk to actually see the riders yes. try this section when they're doing it in press day to see which lines worked but i did see a lot of the newer riders and uh, struggling a little bit back there, trying to do that faster combo. Yeah. And they ended up losing so much more time. Unless they can get it down for the race, they need exactly. to just go back to the consistent one so they don't yep. have one of those catastrophic laps or two that they're losing two losing or three time. sections. Yeah. Yeah. Then you got so, a double double and then triple into right. the corner. So it's, yeah. We did not get to see really when they, once the top riders were tripling, they were landing into the face of this one right here with this Honda Tough Locks. They were just coming through here Rolling and going here and zigging. cutting across yeah. because of press day. They yeah. didn't, they cut these two lanes out for press day, but they're going to be hitting that bull. So they're going to be launching that single, probably landing up in the bull. Yep. And right here, a little bit of the reverse version of it, right? This section coming over and up onto a table there. What do you think here, Mike? I think this thing over there, if you can get over it and then maybe double, triple out or on off triple single. Like we, like I said, we haven't seen. I think it depends yeah. on the dirt, how rutted it gets, and uh, for me, I think it'll be on off, and then 
get through the rest of it. Yep. Well, we got one little section where they just watered. We were trying. Yeah, yeah. To, we were trying to beat the watering the out, but man, it's uh, we're gonna need our mud shoes, mud tires, yeah, yeah. which neither of us have on. So try to stay upright here. So coming through here. Yep. If you come on the table, you're gonna clear this. Then you got another big. big but instead big. of going big, small, small, big, yeah. this is a little different. Yes. This is off the table to a small three footer. Yeah and then three tall five footers yep. right in a row. So With the that after also that. is a different pattern that we don't see every single track either. Yeah, no, I haven't seen five like this yeah. Race in a while. So yeah, I think it's yep. how they, if they can get over that and stay clean, maybe yep. double, then triple out. Yep, yeah, so they could do that, right? Yeah, exactly, yeah. so if you could come over, over. Yep, you could, if you could clean the backside of that table, then you could double here, as you were saying, and then use the five footer to, to completely to triple into the Dunlop yep. Bowl corner up here, yeah. So, so let's talk about Detroit. I mean, here's, <laughs> you, <laughs> funny story. I mean, you've been, ra you raced pro for 23 years, I yes. believe, right? Yes, so, and, it, and it's some great stories because when you started off, you were just a privateer on your own, and then you got picked up the next season by Mitch Payton at Peak Honda. Peak Honda, yeah. Yep. Yeah. But then the next season, you had just a kind of a tryout contract. I know one of those well. That's what I ended up, so yep. I, I, I felt for you there. But then something happened. You did pretty didn't well, work. and yep. then they got you You got basically just told you were, didn't have a seat anymore yeah. after that. Yeah, I was done after Supercross, did the Nationals, a few races by myself, and then called it a day. 93 came in and didn't race many. I raced cars, go-karts, everything but dirt bikes, and then I uh, started training into that year and came back in 94 and won my first Supercross ever out of the back of a Chevy van in uh, Pontiac. Pontiac, so, right here up the road, yeah, here the old Pontiac sure. Dome, which, I, ha, you know, the Detroit market is second only to Anaheim of having as many Supercrosses. So yeah. it, it, I think it had 57 rounds or something at the Pontiac, which is, is crazy that it had that many rounds up there. If we were at Old Pontiac, you'd yeah, be the old squeezing Pontiac, in, the, yeah. in, the, in the soft dirt. And I'm sure you raced there and yeah. how, how soft the dirt was back then and they, now. It's... They had 17 times they raced double headers there yeah, in Pontiac. Crazy, so it yeah. is pretty strange. But you won out of the back of your own van and then yes. that kind of relaunched your pro career. Yeah, straight. Yeah. And so and that was... In the 94 that year, I was from my privateer to Honda Troy, then I was Honda Troy for two or three years and kept working my way back here yeah. and there. and. I'm back here now. <laughs> and amazing. And now you're still riding, still training. I've seen you ride. Trust me, we went to Italy and spent a week together yeah. there. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this guy's got national speed still. <laughs> Have you ever thought about coming back and riding a national? Maybe this year. See how much I can get a ride this year. That was my goal to do a national end of the year. So yeah. we'll see how that goes. Well, we just had Billy Lulinovich make <laughs> yes, the main exactly. event. The oldest yeah. person, 40 years old, made yeah. a 250 main last yes, week in, in Anaheim, which was very, very cool. Billy was a local San Diego guy that For I sure, saw yeah. growing up as kids. So coming out of this bowl corner right here, we got nine whoops, 10 if you count the little pre-starter, just basic dozer whoops. They're pretty clean and they're you know yeah. they they look like they're compacted reasonably well but yeah. i'm expecting some ruts, ruts will uh and i guess you were the race to get is always, yeah. this is where it's kind of won most of the time yeah, Oops. yeah. everyone's got the most momentum coming in not scared to hit them is, yeah. is the main thing here so when you're working with your riders i know you guys are also going to have joey savachi outdoors right yes okay so you've got evan a little young, a little yep. green. Yep. He's got Learning. Jalik, who's been, you know, uh, rode the Husky team. He's been riding with some of the best guys. Comes over as kind of your veteran 250 rider. Like, do you, when you work with them in the whoops and things, do you actually get your leg over a bike and come run through the whoops with them, or are you mostly uh, just trying to work with them? And I shouldn't have done it, but I was out just riding around his leagues and no helmet, no nothing, and went through the whoops. But no, it's more feel and watching and. Uh -huh. I love the whoops when I was racing. That was my favorite part of racing supercross. Okay. I like the whoops, so I wasn't really scared of them, which nice sometimes. But anyways, it's uh yeah, I would like to, but you know maybe sometime this year I'll get on it. <laughs> well, in twenty what twenty twenty two, I think the AMA awarded you the Vet Rider of the Year, which was a, a nice uh, yes award that was presented to you. Um, how many? Loretta Lynn's championships do you have? I think it's 13 total. 13, wow. Year. Yeah. And how many sure. of them as a vet and how many as a youth? Uh, four with the amateur A and B, them okay. years, and then uh, I think nine with the vet stuff. 
That's pretty 25 awesome. Plus. That's I was, awesome. I well, I, bet. 25 I was, is not a bet, is it? So I don't know. 25, <laughs> yeah, still pretty exactly. Young. I think it's pretty young, considering, like we said, yeah. people racing the pros now up until their 40s. So coming out of the whoops into a real basic single, but a two-lane sand corner, a yes. couple of rollers on the inside, nice smooth railing berm on the outside. I, I'm trying to think back the last time I remember a sand, big sand corner Sweeping being like right, right before the finish line. Yeah. It'd be good to see who tries to double into the rotor, the first rotor yep. from the inside and yep. get there. But like you said, it's the first sand corner and really tight. Most of them's kind of open, so it's, yep. I think it'll be rough. So Derek, if you can look, zoom over there a little bit by the Monster Energy and the Triumph Tough yep. Block there. When Mike was talking about, if you're coming out of this section right here, there's a big roller there. There's a darn good chance you're going to see somebody hit that see, and get downside, land here, kind of pivot, and then just one quick Back pop up. and up the finish line jump here. So that would be uh, that would be fast, but that sections, you know, those yeah, sand sections are so every torn lap. up. Yeah. And then heading over there, just a traditional finish line jump. It's positioned right in the dead center of the of the uh, floor of the stadium. We'll go around since they just threw a bunch of water oh. on it. <laughs> yeah. So right here, this next section right here, coming off this finish line is something, I, we were talking about it earlier, it's a pretty basic section for Supercross, yeah. no question about it. But I kind of sometimes, personally I like to see at least one lane that's pretty basic. Racing. Because it allows the riders to race each other as opposed to the track. Yeah, exactly. So you come off of here, just a real simple double that these guys are doing their sleep. But when you're coming off of a sand corner, you might have got a better drive from the outside exactly. yep. or the inside. You, you come alongside of a rider here. Good passing opportunity right here in this next 180. The track even looks super wider here than normal, but yeah, it got a lot of room yeah. to move around and get into the big bowl corner. Yep. So this track, because it is a smaller footprint, they modified the original layout over on the starting line area. It's coming in around 1,650 feet, yeah. which is right about what Indianapolis was last exactly, year. Yeah. And we saw 45 40s, second yeah. lap times. Quick lap times, so, a lot of laps, a lot yeah, of laps yeah, and yeah. heats in the main. Yep, main event 250 could be 21 maybe. Yep. And you know, somewhere around there. And then I and think 450, 450 could be as many as 26, 26 27. 27. Yeah, exactly. So that being said, that's a, that's a lot of laps yeah. to keep your focus, but also it's really hard on the track. I mean, yeah, these 450s tear up, yeah. they tear up the, the you know, so it's, uh, <laughs> who would have known we were gonna have the national yeah. anthem, we have to take your hat off and observe this. Nice. <laughs> so we're gonna, uh, so apologize for that. We were not told this was gonna happen. So we'll try to talk loudly okay. and, uh, we don't mean to disrespect our national anthem, but right. it's a, it's a warm-up rehearsal. And yeah. so coming over this right here, we were seeing the riders. Derek, I don't know if you can position yourself to where you can see that the riders were tripling on here. here. And, and Mike and I are standing up on a little knuckle where they've got it knocked off side. over here. So here, Here's more they don't off. have it. So what they're encouraging right here is to downside this. Tri yep, trip yeah. quad over and then trip double. So. Which I think Chase Sexton did in a, in a practice. So I think, like I said, it depends on the, how the track deteriorates. And uh, yeah, yeah, it's, a, it's a, another tricky section like the first one. Yeah, so, yeah, so you were talking about Chase. Uh, so we give a little applause. Thank you. Chase Sexton <laughs> right down here was basically downsiding this. And at this point right here, he was checking up to double this and I mean checking up because I, I don't know that you could actually triple that that pocket right there that's actually yeah. like a, a hot dog kind of yeah a little yeah. like a hot dog bun is a good yeah, description yeah. it's a pseudo tabletop so check up here for a double but then launch that into the triple other riders that were coming off of that up onto the table they were hitting the knuckle landing here Down the and bucks. then tripling over this hot dog bun <laughs> <laughs> Let me coin that phrase. Yes, exactly. <laughs> button here. So they were uh, jumping over the top of this right here. Double into the corner. Yep, and then, or if they were clearing this, they were singling into the corner. Yeah. So another great uh, design, in my opinion, where it's got multiple options. Yeah. We saw that very first lane that had all the different options. This has some options. So doing so, you know, as the track ruts up, 
you might be eight, 15 laps into the race and you're looking for an alternative, Change your dirt line, yeah, yeah. alternative rhythm section. And so, that happens a lot on the main line, then you can get off yep. tilter, I guess you'd say, and then yep. jump on where the ruts are or not. Yep, off rhythm and so yes. that you never know. You can get off rhythm on those yep. guys and have an opportunity to pass yep. or if the other riders maybe make a mistake or something. Yes. So always stand up on these triples. Does it always seem far to you? Yeah. When I look over that, that almost like, as big as this one. It, it is. used to be it's really huge. small. Yeah, the triples are usually, that one's as big as this. You could yeah. run this track both ways, I guess, <laughs> exactly. both directions. But that's a good size. It, I'm sure it's measuring right around the normal 60 some feet, yep. but it's, uh, <laughs> it seems far to me every time I stand up on yeah, top of one. Sure. So, so triple jump here. They weren't having any issues with it in press day. And then coming here, this is another section where you're going into a, a, a little bit of a rhythm, a little a knob and then you want to scrub this first one and hit the next yeah. one and it launches out onto the starting the, line there yeah. even in press day there was getting really rutted and like g'd out in the faces thing and you yeah. see people having struggles with that so yeah right before we start be. yeah right before we started this track walk i saw Corey and the guys from dirtworks they're over here packing this down further yeah. trying to get it cleaned up but this was one of the more rutted jumps yeah as the riders hit it with a lot of speed so you never know the dirt might have gone in later or didn't have as much chance to dry but uh, yeah, it's a pretty pretty simple shot all the way through here. Yeah. So, talk Here about the Triumph Racing programs. <laughs> Let's not talk about the Triumph Road. <laughs> yeah, so. Well, the good news is we're almost done with the lap. Yeah. <laughs> so, you never you know. You never know when they're trying to give us the the slot to do our track walk yeah. what's going to go on they have so many moving parts here with vip tours and yeah. as you saw national anthem practice and rehearsals and there so we appreciate everybody watching here yes. um, next week we are off to glendale and uh, we'll be what well, will be round six of the 450s and back to the west back coast to the west coast for sure yeah, then back so, uh, weekend so, off for everybody then yeah yep yeah. so, so what are you guys going to do between now and then you think reassess what well reassess guys? see what happens yeah. tomorrow night and hopefully everything's good and we just keep building on what we got and uh you know be back in dallas ready for more very hopefully. good so thank you mike brown and thank triumph you. racing for letting us borrow you right during this busy day Perfect. and uh, thanks everybody for tuning in to the dunlop motorcycle tires track walk from Ford Field here in Detroit, Michigan.